Okay, welcome to a video lecture presentation on materials and energy in an ecosystem. This is Ecology Learning Target 3. Learning Target 3 is going to ask you to be able to interpret illustrations of the cycling of matter and compare the cycling of energy and materials in an ecosystem. So here we have a picture of an ecosystem and this <clears throat> learning target is really about understanding the relationship between matter and energy, which are two different things. Let's review first what we've learned about energy movement. So far in this class, that's what we've focused on, and we've done it using food chains. We've talked about how um, plants take the sun's energy in, and then those in turn are eaten by smaller animals, like this little fish here. Oops, I'm going to need to. Clone that one more time. So the small fish then are eaten by larger fish. The larger fish are eaten by things like hawks. And this food chain is showing the movement of energy. And as you move along here, energy is transferred from one organism to another. And um, one of the things we demonstrated in the lab where we went outside and were passing the water is that some energy is lost at each step and there's less energy available to the fish than there was in the plants and less energy in the larger fish than there was in the smaller fish and less energy in the larger fish than there is in the hawk and in an ecosystem you will have many more plants than small fish many more small fish than large many more large fish than hawks and that's because there's less energy at each level the energy gets lost it comes in from the sun okay brings energy into the plant and then it moves through the ecosystem. That's review. You don't need to write any of that down, but you should know all of that. Now here we get to the part where you're going to be taking some notes. And um, you all have in your notebook a notes sheet which looks something like this. Um, the first page has this picture on it and I would like you to label this as the carbon cycle and you're going to write down some notes as we go. Um, the first thing I want you to notice is that carbon, um, and this is sort of a complicated drawing, so I'm going to walk you through it. Carbon moves in a cycle. We have lots of things on here. We have animals, we have plants, we have sun, we have a factory over here, we've got a lake and the land. But what you're interested in is this thing right here, the letter C, carbon. Okay? And carbon moves, you'll notice, in a circle. And occasionally it leaves the circle and enters different areas, but for the most part it stays in this cycle. And that's because, unlike energy, carbon can be used over and over and over again. Carbon is found in three main places. Okay? And I would like you to write this down in your notes. You need to write the three main places that carbon is found. And then I want you to draw an arrow from each of these places to where it is on the, the diagram. So the atmosphere. Carbon is found in the atmosphere, which is the air above us. Carbon is also found in the body, bodies of living things, like plants and animals. All living things have carbon in them. And another way to think of carbon is as a source of food. And then the other place where we find a lot of carbon is underground, and we call those fossil fuels. This is the, the oil and, and coal that we use to power our factories and our cars and all that kind of stuff. So those are the three main places we find carbon. And I want to focus at first on the atmosphere and the bodies of living things. Carbon enters the bodies of living things with energy. It happens at the same time. The energy comes from the sun and during a process called photosynthesis, which you should underline or highlight on here because it's one of the key ones that you should be aware of. During photosynthesis, the plant uses the sun's energy to make food from carbon in the atmosphere. So you should know where the carbon is from. It's carbon from the atmosphere. And it's going into plants and it's being, it's, it's being turned into a plant using the sun's energy. That makes food. Okay? That takes carbon from the atmosphere and puts it in the second main place, the bodies of living things. And once it's there, it gets passed down this food chain that I showed you before. So now the carbon's in the bodies of living things and is food and it gets passed from one living thing to the next. 
The second major process is one called respiration. And these are both words that are going to come back in a big way in the next unit, so you might as well learn them now. Respiration happens when a plant or an animal has to burn food or turn food back into energy. So the carbon that was in that food gets turned back into energy, the energy is released. The energy is lost, but the carbon goes back into the atmosphere. So from the bodies of living things, like plants and animals, into the atmosphere. That process is respiration. So photosynthesis, to review, takes carbon from the atmosphere, puts it into plants using the energy of the sun. Respiration releases the energy and puts the carbon that's in the bodies of plants and animals back into the atmosphere. Now let's talk just for just a second, let me tell you just a second about why the underground fossil fuels are important, especially in, in relation to some environmental topics. Underground carbon is essentially not part of this cycle. It's stored there and doesn't do anything. But we as humans sometimes dig it up and burn it. And when we burn it, it goes back into the atmosphere, putting a lot more carbon up here than there used to be. And the problem with that is that carbon causes, when it's in the atmosphere, a process known as global warming. And it's why people are so worried about burning fossil fuels, because normally the carbon would be locked underground, wouldn't be in our atmosphere, wouldn't be part of this cycle, and now it is. So here's the main part of this learning target. You need to be able to compare the differences between how energy moves in that food chain that I showed you from one to the next being lost along the way to the way that materials move, like carbon, in a cycle, going from one place to the next, never being lost, never being um, destroyed. And on this page, uh, you will see many different statements. Originates with the sun, lost as heat, one-way path. And we're going to arrange these, <clears throat> and I would like you to pause the video right now and see if you, how you would arrange these statements under energy, materials, or both, and then come back after you've decided how you would arrange them, and I will show you how they should be arranged. And these will go in your notes. Okay, and here it is arranged. Energy originates with the sun. That's the source of all energy for ecosystems. It cannot be reused. It's lost as heat, and it's a one-way path. That's why a food chain goes in one direction. Materials, on the other hand, are recycled or reused, and they follow a circular path. They go back and forth from one place in the ecosystem to another over and over again. The descriptions of both. Well, both are found in the bodies of animals and plants. Remember, the sun's energy is stored in the form of food in an animal or plant, so it's energy and materials. And it's transferred from one living thing to the next when one animal eats another. When one animal eats another, they get the food from them. In that food is materials, like carbon, as well as energy. And then we're going to quickly go over the last, there's three more uh, materials cycles, and you're going to look for information about where these materials are found as well as um, the processes that move them from one place to the next. First of all, water is found in three main places, just like carbon, the atmosphere, the bodies of living things, and underground. On your notes sheet, you should have this picture, and you should be writing down these notes on this picture. I will expect you on an assessment to be able to identify the processes of water movement. First, we have um, evaporation. And that's movement of water from the surface of a lake or the ocean into the atmosphere. You should be aware of that word. If you don't know the definition of that, replay that and write it down. Precipitation. This is rain. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Precipitation is, well, precipitation is rainfall. Going from the clouds into, onto the ground. Transpiration is kind of an unusual process. It puts water into the atmosphere from plants. Here's the definition of that if you've never heard of transpiration. Transpiration is water put into the atmosphere from plants. Groundwater is water stored on the ground. Surface water is water that's stored on the surface of the planet. Condensation is when water that has gone into the atmosphere turns into a cloud. It turns into a liquid. No, cloud is liquid water. And there's that definition if you've never heard of that before.
So just like carbon, water is cyclical. It begins in one place and ends in another, moves in a cycle. And you should be aware of those words and their definitions. Those I'm expecting to see those in your notes. Phosphate cycle. Now, we're not going to talk a lot about phosphate and phosphorus. Um, actually, this should be phosphorus. Okay, Phosphorus actually can only be found in two main places in our ecosystems. It's found in the ground and the water and in the bodies of animals and plants. And humans are involved in phosphorus cycle when we mine things. So here's a picture of the, the phosphorus being mined. We put it on our crops to help the crops grow better. And then some of that gets in the water and the ecosystem. And it's found in the bodies of plants and animals. And there's problems when we take phosphorus that is stored in the ground um, and put it back into the bodies of animals and plants. And the main problem, and you guys will recognize this because it's a big problem in Minnesota, looks something like this. During the summertime, if you've ever seen a lake that looked like this, kind of nasty, green algae, this green stuff is not phosphorus, it's plants. But it's plants that are growing only because there's a bunch of phosphorus in the water that we put there comes off of our lawns and off of our roads and things like that. And that phosphorus was mined and then used by humans and it ends up in our lakes and it screws up the ecosystem. It's, it's kind of a bad deal. The nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen also is cyclical. It can be found in the atmosphere, it can be found in the ground, and it can be found in the bodies of plants and animals. Okay, And actually just like phosphorus, if um, there's too much nitrogen in the atmosphere, we get the exact whoops, same thing happening. And this is this is the result actually of phosphorus and nitrogen fertilizers, basically. Okay, nitrogen. Most of the nitrogen in our world is in the atmosphere, and that's where it really should stay. But we take it out of the atmosphere and we put it in the ground for to grow our plants, and then it kind of messes with the, the ecosystem. Okay, so those are the cycles, and I want you to make sure that you really focus on understanding the fact that they are cyclical, the way materials move. You're going to be asked to identify the way a specific material cycle happens. If you get the water cycle, you could do, use that one. Um, or the carbon cycle with photosynthesis and respiration and fossil fuels and the, the, the plant here. Um, you'll need to know one specific cycle and you'll need to be able to compare it to the movement of energy. Okay, thank you.